he wins the war. Yes, it looked as if death would win. It seemed as if all were lost. It appeared like nothing could be done. But the picture that we have from Revelation is totally different. It's one of victory. It's one of triumph. It's one that reminds us that Christ conquers and Christ reigns forever and ever. Amen. Listen to our lesson from Revelation as John paints this picture for us of the vision he sees of Christ's victory. I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on this and on his thigh he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus is the greatest warrior ever. Jesus is the greatest hero the world has ever seen. His love, his fight for the world knows no limits. He did it all. No one is greater than him. But the last time we left him on Good Friday, he was hanging on a cross. His breath was gone. With the last, he said, it's finished. And he gave up his spirit willingly for us. And so some might ask, how can we talk about victory when the one we say who is victorious is dead? Well, look again. He is not dead. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Shouldn't they have all known that this was going to happen? He's going to be handed over, betrayed. He's going to be crucified, died, and buried. But then he would rise from the dead. And that's what happened. He conquered death. And because the tomb is empty, we have full victory. This rider who John talks about is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who comes into the world to be our Messiah, the promised one. He's now the living one who conquered death in our place. Good Friday was certainly good. It had to happen the way that it did. Jesus had to die. But by his death, he has conquered death. And we see that as he rises victoriously from the grave. Yes, he has conquered. Yes, he lives again. And his victory is our victory. John gives us this vision of, of what's going to happen later now. Jesus died. He rose. Everything's done. The battle's over. The victory is ours. It's yours through Christ Jesus. But Christ will come again. He's conquered. And when he comes again, he'll take all of those who have conquered with him to heaven. At first, when we look at this rider, he too appears scary, doesn't he? He rides around, his eyes like blazing fire, his feet like a furnace. He's holding a sword and he's coming down and with the full wrath of God's fury, cutting down the wine press. And at first we look at him and we see that his robe was dipped in blood. And we think this, this is Jesus and it must be from the blood that he sacrificed. But that's not the blood that's on his robe. The blood that's on his robe is all those who are going to stand there and deny his resurrection. Deny that he was really Christ our Savior. He will cut down those enemies. Because this is something that has eternal proportions. This victory that Christ gives us is the difference between heaven and hell. Yes, it is that important. Yes, it does mean the difference of a lifetime of where you will be forever. So at first this rider looks scary. 
with his weapon and his blood and his anger that he has for those who reject him. But this is a loving warrior. This is a loving rider. He comes and he proclaims his victory that he has not just given to you or you, but the whole world. He died for your sins. He shed his blood so that you could live. And then he rose again to assure you of that victory. And if anybody wants to deny that, well, there were many witnesses. Many times Jesus came and he showed them the the wounds that he had. Yes, he truly died. To make sure he was dead, they shoved that spear in his side, perforating that pericardial sac where, where blood and water flowed out. He was truly dead. But now he truly lives. And it's for you and everyone else. That means your sins, everything you've done wrong, everything that was placed on him on the cross was atoned for. It's made you at one with God. All because of this wonderful warrior, our rider, who is a king of kings and lord of lords because of Jesus. But more than just many witnesses, even that time when over 500 saw Jesus and testified that I have seen the risen Lord, even more than that, we have God's own word on it. That sword that comes out of his mouth, that two-edged sword, is his word. And he is called the word of God. And it tells us what we need to know. We are sinners who need a savior. But Jesus is that savior. He gives us the victory. So today, this Easter is one of wonderful celebration, one of triumph. That empty tomb means that we have full victory. It's not just another battle that has been won. It's not just another step to to winning the war. The war is over. Everything done. Everything accomplished. Not by anything that we've done but by everything our Savior has done for us. Jesus came. Jesus conquered. He paid for your sins. You are forgiven. You have God's own word on it. What a wonderful blessing that we have before us. John gives us this wonderful vision of what will come in the end. It's a picture of our Savior Jesus. A picture of his power, his majesty. A picture of of him who rules and reigns for all. I think sometimes we forget just how important this is. I think sometimes God comes into our world and and sets little reminders to cause us to, to come back to him. Sometimes it's an individual thing where he comes in your life and, and says you're, you're starting to rely too much on yourself or, or your wealth or something else. And he, and he brings us in like a, like a mother hen gathering her chicks. But sometimes he does that to an entire world, an entire nation, the whole globe. And he says, remember what I've done for you. Don't forget it. Don't think that you have victory on your own. Don't think that you could conquer death or or get away from that gross pale rider with his scythe that's coming after you. Because he can't. There is but one who could conquer. But one who is your savior. But one who is the way and the truth of the life. But one who can come through him. And even though they die, they can live forever. And that is Jesus. In a time like this in our world where we can't even gather with a full church on the most glorious day of the year, we need this reminder, don't we? We need to see this victory of our Savior. He has conquered for you. So no matter what touches you, no matter what comes your way, you have Jesus. We look to him. We live our life for him now because he lived and died for us. This is such a glorious day. With the green grass out there and the birds chirping and the flowers starting to bloom. What a wonderful time it is to recognize the life that we have in Christ. Yes, this victory gives us life. That empty tomb shows that he has conquered death. That means we have full victory. One day Jesus will come back now. 
He will come back and he will welcome all those who believe in him to be with him for eternity in heaven. But we don't know until, we don't know when that day is. So we have work to do. We have a whole world waiting out there for, for them to know this wonderful victory. For them to see that this empty tomb means full victory. For them to know that everything they've done wrong, no matter how bad it is, no matter what guilt is harbored in your heart, Jesus has paid for it. And we get to be the ones to tell them that. We get to tell them about this gross, pale rider of death that's coming for everyone. It's inevitable. But that rider has been defeated. Because Jesus has done something that no one else could ever do. He's conquered death. He rose miraculously, victoriously from the grave. That's why this day, not just here, but all throughout the world, whether it's just a few people in person or across the internet, when it works right and doesn't cut out, people are saying, he's risen. He's risen indeed. God's word declares it. Many people saw it. And more than 2,000 years later, we are still celebrating it. And if you didn't know, each and every Sunday as a celebration of Easter. Each and every time we gather, we have this wonderful gospel predomination that says, but we have a Savior. We have the rider on the white horse who leads the way, who is called faithful and true, whose name is the Word of God, who is a King of kings and Lord of lords. Let that be your joy this Easter. Let that be your privilege to know that you are the ones who know it and you get to share it with others. Point them to this victory. Show them the empty tomb. Let them see that our God is victorious. Our God rules and reigns and he did it for each and every one of you. The empty tomb means full victory. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard the word of the Lord our God, we now come before him and we confess our faith. We use Luther's explanation of the second article from the Apostles' Creed. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. All this he did that I should be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from death and lives and rules eternally. This is most certainly true. You may be seated. I'd invite everyone here after the service to bring up their offerings and fill out their connection cards. For everyone at home, you can fill out a digital connection card if you like. Um, for now, we will sing the offering hymn.
invite you to please stand for prayer. You should have a, a cutout in your worship folder. We will have the prayer of the church responsively and then continue with the Lord's Prayer. Almighty and merciful God, on this glorious day we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Increase our faith that the grace of the empty tomb may fill our lives and make us glad each day. When we are weak, be our strength. When we are sad, be our song. When we sin, be our salvation. Remove the disgrace of death from all who mourn. In moments of grief, call believers through the voice of our Good Shepherd and embolden us to follow his promises. In their hopelessness of despair, turn the faithless to trust in the only way, truth, and life. Wipe away tears born of death and give new birth to the living hope in the hearts of the lost and troubled. Use our witness as compassion and comfort for others in the eye of mercy. King of kings and Lord of lords, destroy all dominion, authority, and power that stands against you whether seen or unseen. Whatever evil exerts itself against your saving will, false teaching or lukewarm faith, Satan's lies or worldly pleasures, empty worship or futile religion, rule it for the sake of the gospel's free course. Triumph over our enemies and empower the church to fight the good fight to the end. Never leave us or forsake us. Walk among our churches, O living one, as a faithful witness and the firstborn from the dead. As your angels sent women with the news to the risen Christ, call women of the church to announce he is risen. As you sent your disciples with the power of the Spirit, use all of us to share with the broken and dying world the news of your eternal victory. Empower us to speak your truth and love to our circles of friends, relatives, and neighbors. Bless our efforts to help others understand and believe in the victory of Easter. Heavenly Father, keep the baptized united with your Son in his resurrection. Put to death the fleshly urges of those caught in addictions. Clothe in your righteousness anyone ashamed of good intentions which have fallen short. And assure those searching for purpose that their eternal identity as your dear children is sealed. Thank you for the power of baptism working in our lives and for the certainty of its promises through the resurrection. Enrich us with everything we need for our life and godliness. O Lord of life, you have done mighty things for us. We pray through him who is the beginning and the end, Christ Jesus our Lord. His name is above every name to the glory of God the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and we will sing all the verses of I Know That My Redeemer Lives, hymn 152. <laughs>
please stand as we close with prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated and we sing our closing hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Again, in 155. Good morning once again. Good morning. Glad to have you with us this Easter day. You're, you're a few of the lucky ones who got called just the way the alphabet works out. Uh, glad to have you here. Let's say it one more time. He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. What a wonderful day it is. I pray that you can spend some time with family and friends. Remember, we also have a synod-wide service at 6 o'clock tonight that you can join live streaming. Hopefully, theirs doesn't cut out or they have to restart or anything like that. Uh, those things happen. Uh, but we praise God that we've been able to use technology for the most that it is right now to get out to people. Um, 
And so we'll continue doing that while we have this whole, whole thing going on. Otherwise, blessings to you and your family. He lives, he rules, he's victorious, and his victory is yours too. Go in peace. Amen. Yes, Laura? What's that? Oh, we'll, we'll put the whole service, um, upload it on YouTube like we normally do. It seemed to cut out there in the middle uh, for those watching at home. But we'll send out an email and a reminder to, to watch it there so they can get it too. But go in peace. Amen. <laughs>
having already confessed our sins in worship and receiving God's absolution, you know your sins are forgiven. It is in this sacrament of Holy Communion that God also comes to us to give us his very own body and blood to assure us that we are indeed forgiven. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which has been poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. I set up six spots. They're spread out. So the first six people, or maybe five, we'll do five, and then the five after um, can step forwards. So we'll have everyone on this side and, and the sackets. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was poured out for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. These free gifts of Christ's true body and blood will strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting. You may depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for you for the forgiveness of all sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all sins. These free gifts of Christ's true body and blood will strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. You may go in peace because your sins are forgiven. Amen. Well, I pray each of you have a blessed Easter and a good week. And uh, you're free to go home and celebrate with your families.